Okay, for this video, we're going to look at a creative way to use a form for a baseball roster. But in the process of this, we're also going to try to kind of explain the back end of this and, and the spreadsheet that results that you tend to want to get. Now, if you're using a quiz, you may not need to, to watch this whole video if all you're wanting to do is see the answers and, and have that auto graded. But if you're trying to do a form that's going to take information that you want to use for other things, this video is probably going to be helpful to you. So when I go into the responses section, I've got the option to open this in Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. And, and when you look at this, you'll notice that we have the start date, we have the submit date, the responder, and the responder's name. Now this is all pre-filled in or automatically filled in. And I have an anonymous survey, meaning that this one was set up for people outside of my district to be able to enter in the information. And so that's why I get the timestamp of when they started it and when they actually submitted it. And then I see anonymous here. If I keep it selected where only people in my organization can uh, fill it out, then I'm going to actually see the responder's email and name right here, which is extremely handy for quizzes and things like that. But you see here, I had some question types. And so every question that I asked has its own column in the spreadsheet. So for this baseball example, and you can uh, you know adjust this for lots of things, but I needed to be able to have a cell for every single one of those areas so that when I start cleaning the spreadsheet up, I allow the, the respondents to fill out the form in a way that's going to make the spreadsheet less work for me at the end. So I did last name, first name, and then I did height and weight. And then for bats, you're going to notice that I've got, res I've got answer choices here that are always going to be similar. What might happen is if I ask them just to fill this in with a general text response, like these questions were, what I might get is they might say switch for a switch hitter instead of that they bat both ways. Or they might tell me that they bat RT for right instead of spelling out the word right. Well, I want this to look uniform in my response. So I created a different type of question here, and we're going to look at that in a second. The same thing for throws, for throws bat and, or throws right and left. I wanted to force that information to be basically where I know exactly how it's going to look here in my spreadsheet. And then I did the same thing for the pitcher or the position. So if we go back to our form and into our questions, obviously you see here last name, first name, height, and weight were all entered in there as text answers. Now I used a subtitle to go ahead and try to give them directions on how I wanted them to fill this out. Again, I may have certain responders that don't read that and they don't pay attention. And so I may have to clean some of those up. I could go in and actually create a uh, drop down style question or a multiple choice style question where they have to pick one answer so that I can force that to be uniform if I wanted to. It would be pretty tedious for height and weight though. So I tried to go ahead and let my respondents uh, fill that out correctly on their own. But when you come down here, you'll notice that for these questions, I chose the multiple choice style question. And I did that because I knew that I needed them to have these responses to be the same all of the time. And so when you go to the live preview of this form, what you get here now is for bats and throws, they only have these options. They have to select that. So that information that goes into my spreadsheet is automatically going to be set up the way I want it. And you'll see the same thing here for throws. And then positions you notice is a drop down box. The only reason this happens is Microsoft Forms automatically will set it up that way once you get over a certain number of uh, items in your list. And so you come in here and you see I have pitcher, catcher first, and all the different positions that might show up there. And because there's more in the list there, this became a drop down, but they can still only select one from that option. So those are some things that you need to think about as you're creating forms. You want to know what is it going to look like on the back end with your spreadsheet? Because you want to get for every question type, a column that is going to make sense for what you're trying to do here in that spreadsheet. Again, a little thought ahead of time on how you label your questions and how you set up your form could save you a lot of time on the back end. So I hope this comes in handy. Be sure to really consider this uh, the next time you create your form.